Thank you, Angie. Here at 534, our breaking news we're following this morning. Donald Trump being projected to have been reelected to the White House, having secured enough electoral votes to do so. Leah McNeil is joining us now in the studio. She's been breaking down all of the numbers, looking at a lot of states where I think we didn't expect maybe Trump to take uh, the win. And there's just been a lot of things that I think are surprising people. But we've been watching this whole time razor thin. So I know these numbers here yes. you're kind of looking into. They're very, very close. And we're mm -hmm. actually still waiting on quite a few numbers. We're talking about from Alaska, Maine, and three swing states, Michigan, Nevada, and Arizona. The majority of those, though, are Trump leading. But even with those pending results being raised, are thin. Trump has secured enough electoral votes to get his second term as president. Now we do take a look at the electoral map. We do see red and blue. We'll get that up for you in a minute, but it really does just tell a story. Kamala Harris was just not able to make gains in places that her campaign thought that she would not even keeping up with her the, uh, the current president Biden was able to gain in some of those states. Now Wisconsin, let's talk about zoning on that right now. This, that's the same state in 2016 that Trump actually secured the president uh, the presidency with that state. He won by less than a percentage point back then. It's the same story this go round with Trump getting 49.8% and Harris securing 48.9%. That's a difference of just over 32,000 votes. So again, that just goes to show you how razor thin the margins are when we're talking about this election, especially in those swing states. Brianna, you mentioned earlier about the fact that um, it is so tight. And we were talking about mm -hmm. it just a little bit earlier, how, um, you know, even the states where Biden mm -hmm. performed well, yeah. she just wasn't able to gain momentum in yeah. those areas. Mm -hmm. Illinois, for instance, you mm -hmm. look at states where the Harris campaign, yes, did win, but the margin of victory much slimmer. And so when you just peel away and look at how Donald Trump was able to mm -hmm. overperform her, you can see that particularly in those urban areas and cities, you see the underperformance as well. Right. And that same story in Georgia, too. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw just across the board a lot of uh, Trump gained significantly, especially with Latino male voters. Mm -hmm. I mean, nearly 20 percentage points yeah. on what he performed in the yeah. last presidential election. So very big. Interesting here. because a major platform that he ran on was immigration. Right. And so right. the numbers definitely tell a bigger story here that over the coming days and weeks, we'll be able to kind of dig into a little bit more. But yeah. as for now, these numbers, you know, really important. So thank you, Leah. Yeah, a lot to talk about, including that Joe Rogan endorsement. Some are saying that that made a big deal, too. We've got mm -hmm. a lot to talk about this morning as we do continue our coverage. Yeah, Louisiana residents in the newly created 6th District now have a new record. Representative last night, Democrat Cleo Fields claimed victory with 51% of the vote. Yeah, that was a crowded race, yeah. but seemingly he had no issues getting the votes he needed to secure that win in this newly created district mm -hmm. here. Our Alyssa Curtis joins us live with how Fields is feeling after his win this morning. Alyssa, back to Congress after three decades. Yes, and he is absolutely elated about that victory. Again, like you guys mentioned, he won with 51% of the vote and several points ahead of any other candidate in that race. Republican El Ro Albert Gilroy, excuse me, came the closest in this race with 38% of the vote. Fields returns to Congress now to represent the newly created 6th District. The state legislature reorganized the map recently to ensure a second majority black district after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled the previous maps violated the Voting Rights Act. After the district was redrawn, Garrett Graves, who was representing the previous version of the district, decided not to run for re-election. Fields previously represented the 4th Congressional District and says he's excited to return to Congress. I've been out of Congress for 28 years, and I want to go back to Congress because I want to finish some of the things we started together. You know, it's been 15 years and we still making minimum wage at 725. We got to raise the minimum wage. Uh, you know, uh, early childhood education. We got to invest in Head Start. The Supreme Court will revisit the map soon to make sure these are acceptable. But for now, this race flipped a historically red area blue. Reporting live, Alyssa Curtis, WWL, Louisiana. Thanks, Alyssa. Troy Carter was reelected last night. Carter defeated another Democrat and three Republicans for the second congressional district. That includes most of New Orleans, the West Bank of Jefferson Parish, and parts of Baton Rouge. Carter told us that he's eager to get back to work. I'm anxious to get back to Washington to pass a budget, to, to refund and, and rebuild our disaster recovery, to work on things like disaster recovery, 
to make sure that we have a fix for risk rating 2.0 and to make sure that we continue to rebuild the confidence of the American people. Meantime, Louisiana Representative Clay Higgins won another term last night. Higgins was challenged by another Republican, two Democrats too, but won a commanding 70% of the vote there in the 3rd Congressional District. That district does include Terrebonne Parish, also part of Lafourche Parish. World leaders, you know, they're reacting to the news that former President Donald Trump is former no more, claiming victory here in this election. Yeah, so far we are hearing from the Prime Minister of Israel and the President of Ukraine, just to name a few of those leaders.